Hi guys, this is John Pike and welcome to the team Top Gold Called. Great to have you. It's Thursday the 14th of August. Welcome Wayne and welcome Greg and also welcome to everybody that's going to be listening to this call afterwards. Great to have you guys and great to be creating this together. Thanks John. You're welcome. Welcome Greg as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. It's great to, uh, great to be with you. Righty, great. Well, guys, thanks again for your time. Now, what I want to talk about is through this last week, uh, we got the recording up. There were a few sound problems, and it's probably better to have a, just a few people. That way, um, we don't do that. But what I did do is I went ahead and just added titles, subtitles. So that is something that you can go ahead and use. You go ahead and use it in your marketing. Share it with your people. Because what I do is I just say check the link below. So anybody can actually use that video, download it uh, from YouTube and reuse it or just use the link as it is. What I wanted to talk about, and I'm working on these lessons, building a funnel for our team with training. I've issued all the templates, as you know, also the dream and vision book that we can use. And that's worth using before you actually get one of your own. It is very important, and I heard over this past week that the brain, and apparently this is covered in a book called The New Psycho, Psy, Psycho Cybernetics, that your mind actually can't tell the difference between what you vision with your subconscious and also what you picture and you actually see with your eyes. So this process of actually having a vision, looking at photos of what you desire, what you want to see happen in the future is very, very powerful with the subconscious, the subconscious mind. Well, what I wanted to talk about, and I think it's a very important topic to cover, is showing up in your enterprise two to three times a day. You know, it's very easy to, to get overwhelmed by the day-to-day -day in life. And I've seen it with people, even people that have, I've spoken to that are hot to trot, they're ready to go, ready to get involved in the business. And what actually happens is it's almost like the tide has retreat, retreated, the sand on the beach is starting to firm up a little bit, and with them, you're able to kind of carve into that sand and write some dreams that they can see and picture. But it doesn't take too much before a work schedule comes along and changes things. And they go from being pretty hot and ready to go for a VIP package down to thinking, well, life's a bit of a challenge. I'm still kind of hanging in there. And I'll be looking at, you know, downgrading that to maybe a silver to, geez, my job, my schedule are a bit a bit tight and then you lose traction with them and they lose traction with their dream and it seems like the tide comes in and wash over that area in the sand. You know, what I've heard in the past is that we should have our, our, our strategies written in the sand but our actual goals and what we want to achieve carved in concrete so that if you took a concrete slab down to the beach, your goal, your desire, your end outcome is there and it doesn't matter if the beach washes back in and the, the waves come back in, your actual objectives are going to stay where they are and you, you can redraft your strategy of getting there so we have to be able to adapt. But I know in my life if I don't do affirmations, if I don't look at that dream book in the morning and in the evening, you kind of lose focus and by default our life will be, it will be organised for us. Life gets organized for you. Things happen that's like you don't have to do anything. You're either distracted or demands and attention are going to take their place. And it's very easy to not show up in your business every day, to not show up in your enterprise and think that you're in business. I'm in business because I've joined a company. I'm in business because I've joined a program and you lose that consistency. You actually kid yourself, I'll just check my emails, I'll just touch base with Facebook, but you actually haven't worked your daily plan. You haven't gone through that plan as an anchor. You really should have your daily plan right in front of your keyboard as your working plan that you're working to, to do the basics every day. Because the thing is, we are not in a hobby. It's really showing up in your business is not an option if you're in business. Just having joined a company, joined a program, signed up for free, does not mean, don't kid yourself, that you're in business. We really need to hold ourselves accountable. We really need to give ourselves a firm kick in our tail 
in our rear end. And here's the way that I believe that we can do it. We actually need to take a good look at a week planner. And you can do that in Outlook. You can just, even if you did it in Excel, even if you wrote it on a piece of paper and you did seven columns, pick a, a landscape, not a portrait piece of paper, and have seven columns and then draw lines across for every hour of the day. And let's be conservative. Let's start at 5 a.m. and draw a one centimeter line below that for 6 a.m. all the way through to midnight. Now I'm doing that so that there's enough scope within that so that you cover all possibilities. You may get up at seven. Okay, right in for five and six, that, that's sleep. And then you're getting up and whatever it is, exercise in the morning. Have a look at what your life is like. Plan it out so you can actually see what's happening. And you might go to bed at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock. So those hours before midnight, you know, some people may burn the midnight oil, don't know. You have to adapt this a little bit. But then if you've got work and travel to work, plan that in and meals and family time, plan that in and take a serious look at your life over a seven day period and go, where is the time for my business? Hang on, in the evening, you know, you might get tired and you might get home and you do need to spend some time, family time and, you know, productively relaxing for your, everybody's going to be different. It might be watching and sitting there, watching an hour of TV but not actually watching the TV. Sitting there, you're spending time with your family, but you know your family member might be reading a magazine and paying half attention to the TV. You're with, you know, there's some recreation there, but there's nothing to stop you doing, having a book and reading three or four pages of it and then breaking away and planning that time if you haven't got that mapped out. If you haven't got a business, some time for your business, planned in, you're actually kidding yourself that you're going to be able to do anything on a regular basis, anything on a consistent basis. We spoke a few weeks ago about the whole key to success is doing the right thing consistently for long enough. So what does your plan look like? What does your life plan look like, your calendar? You know, your daily action plan won't be worth anything if you don't have time planned in, be it a lunch time at work, be it a half hour between jobs, whatever, whatever that break is, getting up, up an hour earlier to do your exercise or maybe two hours earlier to do some planning for your day, to do your daily activities, to go ahead and do that connection with people on Facebook. I deliberately left the action plan template sparse with a few basic activities, you know, I would prefer people to say, John, are you kidding? Is that all there is? But if you're not even doing one activities three times a day, then as Jim Rowan said, a lot of these things are simple to do, but they're easy also not to do. As I said, life is, is already full. And the thing is, if you allow your daily life to completely overwhelm your present situation, Think about this, your business will have no future place in your future. If you allow daily life to completely overwhelm the present situation, your business will have no part in your future. Now that might sound harsh, but tell me if it's not any other way. You know, what you do today and yesterday is actually setting up tomorrow. Sometimes it takes almost two weeks to connect with some people. Yeah, we should connect, buddy, and something comes up. I've had people with modem issues and, you know, get different connections. People have been busy for two to three days. You try to connect, it's a different time zone, whatever it is. And it can take up to two weeks. So many times your actions today and last week are setting up what you're doing on a daily basis today trying to connect with people, have meaningful connection with movers and shakers, yeah, even yeah. connecting with people on a daily basis. You do have to set that up. As Jim Rowan said, it's not the wind and it's not the storm, but it's the setting of the sail, how you steer your ship into the wind. And I can take that, that concept of setting the sail two ways. It's how you steer your ship and set the sail so you can go and tack into the wind 
or setting up the sale in your enterprise, the final closing of the sale. It's the connection, it's the follow-up, it's the touching base, it's having a full funnel, a full pipeline. You're always closing in everything that you do. You close from the beginning. Are you open to a home-based business? What has you in a position where you're actually looking to generate income? Do you realise they're, they're closing their trial close questions at the very beginning? It's not some hard close. We need, we need to get people to sort themselves out. We need to be saying less to more people. We need to people to qualify themselves for our time and count themselves in or out. If they're not open to looking, then why are you pursuing them? Why are you taking things further? When you close, it's early and often, as Jeffrey Combs says. So what you're doing on a daily basis is setting up tomorrow. Don't hang your hopes on that one person that you think is really promising. While you're not connecting with them today, you need to be building relationships and connecting and setting up those potential people that you're looking at trying to connect with today in the next one to two weeks. It's a process, a continuous process. You know, it's only humans, we're the most, we are the most intelligent species out, but the thing is, we seem to question things more than nature, than mother nature. You know, it's like the mother turtle lays a whole bunch of eggs knowing Nature just knows that a whole bunch of those little turtles are going to get picked off once they hatch and go to the beach. And only a few reach adulthood. In the early spring, which is, which it is in Australia, fruit blossom trees will have a whole heap of blossoms, but then you'll get a haze, howl storm that will knock half of them off. Nature is abundant. It's us that doesn't sow in abundance, hoping for those that sift and sort their way through to be the final pieces of fruit that we're going to have in our enterprise. We actually have to think like Mother Nature does, think abundance, sow abundance, and to do that, we've got to have room for our business on a consistent and daily basis. This doesn't mean shutting family out. It means planning family in. It means planning meal times in, planning recreation, but also planning your business in. Sometimes it's like you have to take a crowbar and wedge it in and lever and push some time into your daily schedule to make it happen. All our actions are based on what we've been planning and what we've been doing. You know, I was listening to Les Brown today and I kind of, it's not forbidden at work at the moment. So kind of, you know, you can't sort of be listening to stuff on your computer all day long. It's obviously going to depend on your circumstances in your work, but some people will plug into FM stations and they'll listen in the latter part of the afternoon. Well, while they're doing that, I'm listening to someone like Les Brown doing the more mundane crunching spreadsheets or stuff where you don't need to call people. Think about how you can do it either listening into the car or listening to mindset. You just have to be diving into mindset. What Les Brown said, and I listen to him say this, is you actually need to die to who you are right now to give birth to you're about to become in the future. It was absolutely priceless. And he talked about, you know, being in the job. I've heard it being called just off broke, but he said the journey of the broke. People are trapped in nine to five living. And they've got dreams, but you need to make a place, be efficient in your work so that you can be efficient in your business. We need to die to who we are today to give birth to who it's that it's almost that violent you have to constantly be renewing yourself being born again as he said and he alluded to because we're actually uncommon we're uncommon and we have to work and we're the ones that want to work those he said there are two types of people those who work and those who watch which one are we are we watching the game happen or are we out behind the wheel of the car driving or are we playing a spectator sport? Think about it. Put ourselves on the spot. Before we become a leader, the greatest person that we need to command and control is ourself. Blue sky just doesn't happen. You kind of have to make it happen as you go. Think about it. You know, right now you might be doing something productive. Don't call that person in your productive time. Call them when you're driving, when you get into the car. 
bang, 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 what you can do in parallel activity, making the best of your time. Well, guys, that's pretty well what I wanted to cover. It's, I think, something that we need to keep in mind. You know, we, it's, if you don't have a plan for your business each day, it's almost worthless to have a daily action plan. Once you've planned that time into your reality and you're making it a reality, then you can be working that plan to be consistent and to get those long-term results. Everybody I hear pretty well says, you're guaranteed results if you stick to the plan, if you work the system. The system, as Les Brown says, is no respecter of persons. No respecter. You know, he was actually scared to talk around people initially. He, shut, he said he'd shut up to begin with. He wouldn't open his mouth when he was around people who'd had a university education because he somehow felt he needed that and that he was lacking. But the thing is, you work a system and it doesn't matter where you've come from the shop floor, whether you've come from the highest levels of free enterprise or corporate, sorry, the corporate ladder. The system is no respecter of persons. So we need to be systematic about everything that we do. And don't let circumstance filter us out of being entrepreneurs. It's a privilege to be an entrepreneur. We are uncommon. We are actually swimming upstream against the current. We're actually creating a precedent. And sometimes I think, you know, well, I can't, I can't, you cannot light the fire within someone. But I tell you what you can do. You can provide the spark, the example, the consistency, sharing this call, creating this call to inspire others to catch fire themselves. It's up to them to catch that vision. So wrapping up this first part, I just want to say, let's keep it in mind ourselves and let's encourage others to plan their lives accordingly. I think what I'll do is create another template for this so that we can use it ourselves and also share it with others and go, well, show me your life. People complain about lack of results, but really they're focusing on results and complaining about results that they've got through the very lack of action that they've ended up sowing. What you sow, you do reap. Guys, what are your thoughts about this from your experience and also the experience that you've witnessed in others? Wayne and Greg? Yeah, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense, John. And I think, you know, you're right. People just get consumed in their everyday lives and it's it's really difficult to, to create a plan and stick with it. Um, but I think you know, it's it's absolutely essential in this online business that you do that. And I, I've felt guilty myself that, you know, you know what you should be doing, but you're often not doing it. Yep. And, and I've heard John Asaraf, good comments there, Wayne. I've heard John Asaraf saying, you need to do the right things in the right order. And it's, it's easy for me to goof off and, and, you know, in a way, you have to be connecting as well. There is a balance there of connecting and commenting on, the, on other people's content. For it to be reciprocated, you're developing... Uh, I've heard it terms... You know, you're developing capital in the bank, in the social bank account by interacting with people. But there's no use me doing that if I know that I have to develop a funnel or be testing something to share with my team. So sometimes we have to become totally outcome focused where you put your daily action plan to the side because you've got to get that video recorded to share that content. You've got to go ahead and create that piece of content. So doing the right things in the right order, it's often, you, when you do do that, you feel an enormous sense of liberation because you, you lose that guilty feeling of, you know, you should be doing something else, you know, confusing activity with achievement. Greg, what are your thoughts? Greg, are you with us? He's probably unmuting at the moment. Well, guys, that's pretty well what I had to cover. What I've done is done a, a video on Camtasia and ended up recording it based on the actual, based on the actual uh, material that I covered last week. So I'm going to show people how to go ahead and ask a question. What I'm going to do after this call is go ahead and record the outcome. So I actually posted something 
I asked a question, I put a different quote to the picture quote based on what you talked about, Wayne, and added a question to it. So I had quite a few comments on that and you develop a bit of a, a chain of likes and commenting back. So it's active, it's interaction with people. Well, Wayne, um, I'm not sure whether Greg is recording this, whether there's been a continuity issue, but I've been recording it on my side just as a backup, but I've got a one-way recording only. Anything you wanted to add, Wayne, at this stage? No, John, I think you've pretty well covered pretty well every base there in that uh, short amount of time. Okay, all right. It's just a matter of implementing. Yep. You know, I think that's the key. And how are you like finding... You said, you know, sorry. He said that there's two types of people, you know, but, but those that sort of do and those that sort of watch you know i think that's the key you know yep. you, you find a strategy you, you implement it it's, it's never going to happen unless unless that happens yep true so wayne's just said it's very important with the implementation side of things and we were just recapping what i mentioned that les brown said as wayne reiterated there's two types of people those that watch and those that work and the importance of finding that strategy and putting it to work so Thanks for those comments, Wayne. Well, at this stage, uh, I'd like to wrap the call up. It's been short and sweet. It's been great to have you guys on board. And I'm slowly, step by step, putting together our actually emailed out. You would have got the email, Wayne, with the training that I did do, the very basic training that I shared how to connect and shared that stuff that Brian Pedersen had done, as well as some very, very basic ways to find people on Facebook and go ahead and use that Facebook graph search. So that's been some of the, the major things I've put together. Really, how do people start? Well, finding people to talk to, number one, finding people via a searched method that allows you to find targeted people to talk to and then how to connect to them. I really don't see it needing at this stage to be any more complicated than that in terms of connecting people and doing active prospecting. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, Wayne and Greg. What we'll do is... You're welcome, you welcome, John. It's, it's been good to, uh, to have you go through all that and, and uh, give us a reminder of uh, where we should be at and, and uh, what our goals should be. Okay. Excellent. I appreciate that, Greg. Um, you were silent for a little while. Was that because you were muted or did you have continuity of connection? No, no. It's because I was muted. Uh, I didn't want any background noise okay. coming through. Yep. Okay. Well, that's been great. Um, Wayne and Greg, thank you very much for your time. Let's keep working on this and feel free to also send through any suggestions that you might have. Share this also with your people and let's keep doing the work. Let's go ahead and inspire those and ignite the spark and the flame in those who tend to watch and also keep ourselves on fire. So very very much appreciate you guys being part of that call. Thanks for your participation and look forward to touching base with you at the same time next week at 6 p.m. South Australian time, 6.30 on the east coast of South Australia, uh, sorry, of Australia and 4.30 in the west. All the best. Thank you very much, guys. And as always with this call, guys, feel free, if you're listening to this, to check the link that we'll put at the bottom of this video so that you can catch up and see more of what we do. If you're watching this, feel free to give a like, a comment as well, and also feel free to share it. We're putting this value together to help you, whether or not you're in our team. Thank you very much. Look forward to catching up with you in the next video and the next meeting. Thanks, guys. All the best and bye for now. Okay, thanks, John. Thanks for your thanks, time. Thanks, John. Thanks, Greg. Bye.